Dr. Sampath, how do you view this? Because you've written histories. Do you find an attempt being even made to understand where you're coming from? Uh, you were mentioning an incident <coughs> at a uh, festival some time back where you were shouted down, etc., etc. That's not the approach either. I don't think you are revisiting some of our histories to paint uh, uh, an acrimonious picture of interfaith relations. Neither are you suggesting, correct me if I'm wrong, that the inheritors of that history should be punished today for what certain ancestors did. Is that, no. is, I mean, if one were to accept what Mr. Kushid is no, saying. not at all. I think uh, the, the dire need, and I think I uh, would like to address the point of Mr. Kushid made, that the converse is actually true in my, uh, my view, that hyphenating today's communities, specifically today's Muslims, the albatross of Ghazni and Ghori and Aurangzeb and Tipu does not lie on any of their shoulders. A young Muslim man or woman is not responsible for them. But on the converse, by trying to whitewash and erase these, uh, these excesses committed by these invaders, somewhere the policy makers in the last 70 years, perhaps, knowingly or unknowingly, have tried to tell them that if we talk about this, you are going to feel, uh, you know, offended. So why are you hyphenating them with these invaders in the first place? It's the, the, the uh, boot is on the other foot. Now, when we talk of the excesses of the East India Company, no one is worrying that the Christians of India are going to get offended. We very openly talk, Dr. Shashi Tharoor has written an entire classic on the inglorious empire. But why not something on the Islamic conquest of India, uh, as Will Durant had mentioned? There, why does this uh, thought come that it's going to make someone feel uncomfortable? So by doing that, sub subconsciously and subliminally, somewhere the people on, the, on a certain ideological disposition have already put that albatross on the uh, shoulders of uh, a, a particular community. And if, first of all, you don't need members of one religion as icons for that religion. Uh, a, a Hindu, a Parsi, a Jain or whatever can be an icon even for a Muslim boy or girl. Uh, you don't have to make Aurangzeb look secular. Uh, there, are, there are crazy uh, people who also say he protected more temples than he uh, you know, destroyed them. Uh, just like probably Hitler would have probably murdered lesser Jews uh, than he could have. Uh, but then why do you have to do all that to ensure that, you know, that community finds an icon? In, uh, in my state, Karnataka, Tipu Sultan is today uh, made almost like this symbol or an icon of a particular community. Whereas there are living memories of uh, hatred against him beyond politics and political parties among the Kodavas, among the Mangalore uh, Christians, Syrian Christians, the Catholics, the Nayars of Malabar, the Mandiam Ayangars, all of them, which is as much living history. So I think uh, this dehyphenation is most important. You don't need members of the same community as icons for them. Even if you need that, you may have syncretic examples of a Dara Shikor or, uh, you know, Ras Khan or uh, Rahim and so on, whom you can draw rather than do this subterfuge that, you know, whitewash these crimes. And that, I think, so actually the, uh, the, the, the argument is on the other side than what Mr. Khurshid made, in my view.